how to plan a case study. Well, in a sense, I talked a little, a little bit about this last week when I was talking about surveys, the, the normative approach to how you do things, the stages you go through. Um, but you can see that, that, I think from reading those abstracts, uh, that, that there's a set of issues about how you design a case study that are not at all obvious. You need to think about these things, I'm suggesting. You need to think about the conceptual framework, uh, you need to think about research questions, research design, sampling, methods, and analysis. Now, I'll talk all about all of these in, in greater detail as I go through now. So these are the, the headlines, if you like, the conceptual framework. So a bit more detail about the conceptual framework. <clears throat> the, I think if you look at the diagram I've given you on the, on the handout, you can see a couple of examples here. Um, figure two, let's start with, example of the conceptual framework. Um, now, the particular researchers have laid this out as a little diagram here. Um, now, what might be the context of this? Um, it might be uh, an organisation bringing in experts to advise it about how to do something, how to re reorganise itself or whatever, how to introduce some new procedures into their organisation. And here the researchers identified um, various key groups within the case. So the, the case might be a particular organisation, a particular company that's doing this and bringing in the experts. So we have gatekeeper views, goals and motivations. So the gatekeepers might be the important people um, who are determining whether the new systems are implemented or not. So that might be the managers and so on in, in the organisation. The experts and their views, the is initial issues and system goals that they plan together, and then, of course, there are the users, the people who work in the organisation, um, and their views, um, and how that affects their behaviour, and how the experts might affect their behaviour as well, hence the arrows suggesting there are some impacts and some causes going on here. User behaviour clearly has a big impact on the system effectiveness, and that has an effect back on how they behave. So if the system works well, they might change their behaviour in certain fashions. If it doesn't work well, they might change their behaviour in different ways. And also, the, the whole the, the system that's been set up, the characteristics of the system, might have an impact on that as well, the, the effectiveness of the system. So hence, there's another thing there. So, okay, so what this diagram indicates is this very broad kind of brush example of a, an organisation going through some kind of change. Here are things you need to look at. So it gives you a kind of framework for thinking about that. So just to, to summarise those points, let me go through these here on the screen. Conceptual framework displays the important features of a case study. So what are the things that you want to know about and collect information about? What are the objects within that? Might be people, but it might be other things, as I've suggested here uh, on this diagram. Shows the relations between them, who's affecting what, or what, what things are affecting other things, and in what order the things happen. So it shows the relations between them. And it also makes your assumptions explicit. So the, Writing stuff down, producing a diagram. You don't have to do a diagram, but, but doing something like that, a diagram or a list, or at least writing things down, you begin to make explicit what you're doing. And you can also be selective. You can also say, I'm going to look at these things and not these things. These things are less important for me. These things are really crucial, so I need to examine these. So you're being selective. And of course, the thing about a case study in its context is it can be enormous. You can look at anything that's going on, particularly if you're doing something like an election, quite a large-scale case study, Elections can be incredibly large and complicated and so on. So which bits of it do you focus on? And that's why you need a conceptual framework to tell you what bits you need to spend your time looking at and, and energies looking at, rather than spending, you know, trying to do everything because you can't. It may be iterative as well. It might be something which you start doing, you modify, come back and look at it again. So that kind of notion of, of cycling round and, and, and focusing in gradually on certain things. You might start with one particular model and gradually modify it as you begin to understand what's going on in the case study better. Oh yes, theory is very important here that um, you ideally need to refer to the literature, do your lit review properly and sort of get some understanding of how one might explain what's going on here. And of course, the theory may also identify the phenomena that are important within your case study to look at as well. And of course, takes account of previous research. May include your own personal orientation. I mean, again, just in any, any research just about, you may have ideas either from your own personal experience or because you've, 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 you've been talking with people about this, ab about what's important and what's going on. And that can be a good source of 
of, of um, inspiration, I guess, for, for, for a case study. So can I just, do, uh, just so I, um, I understand it again? Yeah. So could you apply something like that to say, um, if you wanted to look at how change is implemented in NHS organisations, mm, yeah. would that be the kind of thing you would you would you could look at? Yes, in that case, if it, you'd obviously focus on a particular kind of change. So, what what is the change? Maybe the change is. Um, one I happen to know about because I, I supervised this some time ago, the nursing handover. Right. You know, say you want to look at that. So that's your case study. You might look at that in perhaps one hospital and see how it operates across different wards and so on, different kinds of nursing and so on. But it's the focus is on the, the, the nursing handover. And, and you might be, there might be some kind of change in how that's done, some, some change in the procedures, the record keeping and so on that's going on that you want to look at. And that would be your focus, that, that change. So what happened before, what happened after, maybe over a period of time even. It might be over a few months that you look at the case study. So that's how you, you, you'd ask those questions, yeah. Does that, does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, just because just if I apply it practically, I understand it. Better. Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> okay, um, so the next thing, I think going back to this list here, some research questions next. And you've all been coming up, as you read these abstracts in the exercise, you all were coming up with research questions. Uh, what was it they were trying to find out? So what is it you need to know? And that's, I mean, in a sense, I've just given the example of that. We need to know what's happening in the changer. Has the change made it better or worse um, uh, in, in the, the, the system in the hospital? Um, that's a good example of a research question. But research questions can be um, quite conceptual too. Um, so um, ideally, this should be con consistent with your conceptual framework. The, the little diagram I started with just now um, might be a good way of, of, uh, of, of expressing your research question. I mean, in that case, it would be you know, the way in which the expertise perhaps is, is affecting the, the restructuring. Uh, of things, so have experts got a positive role to play in this kind of kind of thing? That might be a research question. But also, um, it's quite important that that the research question should refer back to to a kind of theoretical literature too. So, you know, the conceptual framework should reflect your your um, theoretical understanding of what's going on here. So back back, back to the literature, the, the organisational literature or the psychological literature, uh, and trying to, to tease out what kinds of explanations there might be of what's going on. Of course, it's got to be structured and focused, and in particular, it's got to be answerable. So back to the points I was making in earlier sessions about narrowing down and being specific in things. Don't try and answer too many questions. Try and get something which you can do with the resources you've got with the case that you're looking at and with the time you have to spend on it. So it's got to be answerable in that sense. And of course, once you've got a clear question like that, it begins to answer questions about how you're going to collect data. It, you then, it then directs you to say, I need to find this out from these people. I need to ask these questions. I need to observe these things going on or whatever. So it, it focuses that way. <laughs>